here in Hollywood, Los Angeles, California. We are on like lockdown status, a shelter in place. We just got the notification, you know, the ones for Amber Alerts. We got one just recently for COVID. What's up everybody, Chris Mary here, back again with another video. This time I'm introducing a whole new series called Newsway, where I kind of just cover topics in the industry that I find interesting and I want to talk about. This video is actually how coronavirus is affecting the industry and what we can look forward to post-global pandemic. Okay, I'll see you on the other side enjoy. It wasn't long ago when Hollywood was celebrating the international win of South Korean film Parasite for Best Picture at the 92nd Academy Awards. A positive beginning with staked flag and new representative diversity in the industry, followed up by Sonic the Hedgehog speeding right into a surprising and well-deserved box office win. I'll defend the Sonic movie any day of the week. With new Marvel movies on the horizon, Star Wars themed content constantly releasing, video game franchises adapting onto HBO and more, it seemed Hollywood and the creative industry were on a northbound trajectory for fresh, if not new, content creation. With Disney+, Plus, Apple TV+, Plus, and now HBO Max launching, all new individual streaming services being provided by every television network in addition to the already juggernaut Netflix, Amazon Prime, and newly Disney acquired Hulu, the demand for creating content was in no way slowing down. It took but three weeks since the virus threat first started percolating the social space of the U.S. before this town of tinsel and fame turned dark, with theaters abandoned, studios vacant, productions halted, and residents government mandated to shelter in place, practice social distancing, and stay inside at all costs unless for emergencies or necessities. COVID-19 has created a major roadblock in the Hollywood ecosystem, and ultimately the entire world. But how does this affect the movie industry in the long term? South by Southwest throwing in the towel early due to the March festival falling right in line with the whirlwind of panic and confusion flooding our news feeds gave the industry their forced wake-up call as years of planning, filmmakers, musicians, festival attendees, and locals alike watched the lifeblood of Austin hemorrhage overnight. One of the largest film and music festivals in the country held in Austin, Texas will be sitting out the kickoff of the decade for the first time in 34 years. Many filmmakers debuting their projects will have to reshift their gears with new releases and restructure a distribution plan moving forward, as well as look into going back to the well to reinflate advertising budgets to rebuild hype for projects post-pandemic, as not even six-time Super Bowl title-holding Tom Brady's announcement of joining the Tampa Bay Buccaneers could draw enough attention from the public during this pandemic. Cannes Film Festival followed suit along with countless other festivals in closing its doors, some postponing with undisclosed dates and others calling it a mulligan year to include the 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo, now postponed until 2021. A Quiet Place 2 living up to its name all too well as vacant movie theaters postponed the releases of several upcoming films to include the new James Bond iteration, No Time to Die. Disney's live-action remake of Mulan, and Marvel's Black Widow solo debut starring Scarlett Johansson pushed to what looks like an August release. A few of the many already in production affected include the now-halted Sony Uncharted adaptation, an indefinitely postponed SNL, James Cameron's Avatar sequels, Matrix 4, and Amazon's Lord of the Rings series all fail to avoid shutdown as the coronavirus continues to spread and government officials enforce the halt of all non-essential businesses. The already life-supported movie theaters pivoted quickly with studio support to on-demand movie releases to help offset the crippling, near-zero box office revenue as AMC furloughs its entire corporate staff of 600, including the CEO, after a 42% loss in stock within the month. Brett Lang, Adam Bivari, and Matt Donnelly over at Variety pointed out how, and I quote, there's never been a global epidemic that threatens so many core pieces of media conglomerates at the same time. Viacom CBS is no better shape with over 50% loss of shares, and even Disney takes a large hit with shares down 37% since January, and all six theme parks being closed for the first time in history. The financial hardship of closing up productions extends far beyond the market and studio overlords as thousands of cast and crew go into forced career hibernation. Unemployed producers, directors, actors, cinematographers, editors, grips, electricians, set builders, artists, production designers, production assistants, sound engineers, coordinators are only a scratch on the surface of the large demand of talent and technical experts required to put together a film production. 
And in an already high-end real estate market of Los Angeles, the worry of losing creative minds, projects, and futures alike all fall into question in an industry that is already fighting a battle of fair wages, while already crippled from the impact of the newly enacted AB5 bill. With over 70 TV and film productions shut down with indefinite returns and a list growing by the day, will the movie theater survive such a critical blow to an industry that was already struggling to put patrons in seats with the new rise in at-home streaming? Is this the rise of the on-demand movie release and the ultimate long-form farewell of a way we consume our media? Only time will tell, but one thing is for sure. Like in many other facets in our society, the industry will be forever changed and affected by the results of this global pandemic and how the industry recovers will pave the way for a new future in cinema. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel. Give it the thumbs up if you liked it. Give it the thumbs down if you didn't. Please comment, share your thoughts. Thank you once again, guys, and keep creating.